Hi folks, Andy here and East World Journeys is the game and vlogging and blogging is my game. Did I really just say that? I'm sorry. Anyway, where are we today? Well, we're somewhere in Melbourne, technically. So this must be Melbourne Revealed. Today at Melbourne Revealed, I'm in the suburb of Williamstown and I'm at a spot called the Jawbone or Jawbone <laughs> or Jawbone Bay and today I'm going snorkeling and I'm taking you with me folks, you're snorkeling to see what we have under the waters. But first, uh, there's a little bit of a look out, it's only 100 or 200 metres from where I am right now uh, and it's only about the same from the uh, the beach spot where I'll be heading out from so I thought let's go and have a little look uh, out there first and check out the views. We have uh, some beautifully sunny weather right now as you can see it's uh, low 20s heading up to a maximum 25 26 probably a little bit cooler out of Williamstown though and uh, it's a bit windy Hopefully this gives you a good look at the actual bay here. Uh, I think it's, it's a jawbone bay. Uh, you can see it's, it's, it's shaped like a jawbone. It's uh, not rocket science, I guess, why well, they called it that. Over there, you probably can't see there's a black swan. And it appears the tide is right out. Not ideal for snorkeling, I think. And over here, this all used to be, this is sort of marshland. And over there, if you can see it, that's the industrial area over there. You've got lots of pipes sticking out of the ground, doing their thing. Here we are, as far out as we can go. That's where we've come from. But you can keep panning around. You can do a full 360 here, obviously. Uh, this coastline is just to the west of Melbourne, the southwest of Melbourne, um, which is the opposite of Brighton. Uh, but we're still Port Phillip Bay, uh, and it, it continues on that way. It's a huge bay, I mean, it's huge. Uh, and the, the, city, the city centre of Williamstown is probably only five to six minutes drive from here. And um, this whole area, there's, you can go much further on this way. There's lots of paths around, so um, if you're not in for a swim or a schnockle, uh, you may find that the paths offer a, a you know a few k walk for you that's uh, quite pretty uh, and you will probably see an, um, a lot of vegetation but also uh, plenty of birds and stuff as well. And a whole folks, I guess uh, we're not going to waste too much time here. We're going to head our way over there to the door Bombay and we'll uh, we'll get out the snorkel and we'll snorkel a bit. So over here, you can see rear, I'm uh, bad here. I'm going to sort of go in the water here and swim a little bit around here, I think. Uh, and here are some of the things that we may see. We've got zebrafish, lots of seagrass, uh, southern fiddler ray. I'll try not to step on one today. Uh, we've got 
11 arm sea star, dusky moorwong, and short tailed nudie branch. And out there also, I think there are a few other things as well that we might see. Uh, and we'll, uh, we might see a, a, a blue ringed octopus, but uh, we'll be steering well clear if we do. So over here we have examples of, of things that actually live in this sort of swampy area because I think sometimes, obviously over there at least, the tide comes in and a lot of that's underwater. Um, one that we do have to watch out for today is this little fella here. He is the blue ringed octopus um, and their sting can be, their venom can be deadly. I think we've only had, I think in the last 50 years or something, only two deaths from blue ringed octopus and usually what happens is kids will go in there, they'll see it, they'll think it's beautiful and they'll pick it up and that's when the problem occurs. Okay folks, well, the time is upon us. I just have to find myself a nice little spot to, um, to put my bags somewhere in good sight. And uh, then I am going to uh, put on a bit of sunscreen, attach my schnockle, and uh, well, wish me luck, hey? Wish me luck.
Hey folks, yes I've survived and without a stingery this time, not one in sight. Um, so, I must have been in the water for 20-30 minutes, had a good swim around, there's lots of rocks out there, I think it really would help if the tide was in, but it was out. Unfortunately, as I said, low tide is not the best for this sort of thing. Uh, so I didn't really see a lot. Uh, it was a little bit murkier than when I was in Brighton. Uh, it wasn't that bad. Uh, lots of rocks, lots of sea vegetation, um, sort of these spiky sea urchins stuck to a lot of uh, rocks there. And what else did I see? I saw um, a bit of seaweed. Uh, mussels all clamped up on the rocks under the water and that was kind of cool that was kind of cool and um, just the experience of sort of going and swerving in between and around the rocks certainly helped to have a snorkel uh, made a huge difference because uh, I could stay underwater all the time uh, and that meant that I didn't have to stop and on my way back to shore I did finally see a couple of sort of white fish not sure what they were I then headed over in that direction over there because I thought well there's some rocks over there there might be something over there and I went there but it was it was just far too shallow um, so you couldn't really swim I did swim for half a second uh, and um, uh, here's the footage of that but I think I think the thing to do is to come with more than one person because I, I would have felt better if I had someone as a backup here just in case something happened um, and I would have gone a bit further out I'm not sure how far I went maybe 50 meters maybe 100 meters no more than 100 meters um, and also it'd be nice if, if this area was sort of covered I guess uh, with water because then I think more stuff comes in and probably you have to go around the point to see a lot of fish and stuff like that out into deeper waters of up to I think six meters so I'd rather um, I'd rather be with someone if I did that but that just gives you a little glimpse of snorkeling uh, at the jawbone here in Weemstown and I hope you enjoy coming along today oh Mr. Seagull and a little seagull the seagull is doing the thing seagull I see a seagull hello hello you do a do a dance <laughs> please forgive me please forgive me I know not what I say anyways thank you for joining me I will see you on another episode of Melbourne Revealed take care until then look after yourself may the journey never end